New Suzuki Swift 2017 Review A new Suzuki Swift has arrived, but can it rival the class leaders in the super mini sector? Verdict 3 Star The Suzuki Swift is an easy enough car to like, with smart design that builds on the cute looks of its predecessors, and some excellent efficiency figures. But its interior finish is no better than the class average, the ride is brittle and the infotainment system is clunky and slow to respond. It is also short of a USP in a class where it's notoriously hard to stand out. Pricing and finance offers will be the key if it's to rise above the likes of the Hyundai i20 and Kia Rio to do what Suzuki wants, challenge the excellent Skoda Fabia and the all-new CD Visa. Suzuki is rapidly developing a complex range of small cars. We've already been impressed by the Bailano, and the quirky Ignis offers something different from the mainstream. But now it's time for a new generation of the firm's center ground super mini, the Swift. The Suzuki Swift has shifted 127,000 units in the UK since the car was rebooted back in 2005. Now the firm has set bold targets for the new model, it wants to sell at least 20,000 examples per year to British customers, enough for it to overtake the Skoda Fabia and CD Visa to enter the top 10 sales chart for super minis. The latest Swift makes use of the same lightweight construction as the Bailano, so it sheds about 10 per center of its mass compared with the outgoing model. Indeed, with curb weights as low as 890 kilograms, it's just about the lightest offering in the class. On paper, the new car's dimensions look encouraging, it's actually about 10 millimeters shorter than the outgoing Swift, but crucially, its wheelbase is 20 millimeters longer, a tweak designed to improve cabin space. Boot capacity increases by 54 liters to, now 264 liters, although it still falls short of what you'll find in a Ford Fiesta, Kia Rio, or Dacia Sandero. Just two petrol engines will be offered. The entry-level unit is the 1.2 dual-jet four-cylinder with 8.9 bhp and 120 nm of torque. It manages 0 to 62 miles per hour in 11.9 seconds, while returning official combined fuel economy of 65.7 mpg and 98g slash km of CO2. The other engine is Suzuki's 1.0 liter three-cylinder, direct injection booster jet turbo. It produces 110 bhp and 170 nm of torque between 2,000 rpm and 3,500 rpm, enough to take the Swift from 0 to 62 miles per hour in a more sprightly 10.6 seconds. It's not quite as efficient, though, with combined economy of 61.4 mpg and CO2 emissions of 104 g slash km. Suzuki's SHVS mild hybrid system is offered on both engines too, as long as you go for the range topping trim level. It places a lithium-ion battery underneath the front passenger seat and uses it to harness regenerative braking energy and power a small integrated starter generator. This, in turn, assists the engine when the car is accelerating, helping to save fuel. SHVS is offered on the 1.2 in conjunction with four-wheel drive, helping to negate most of the extra weight that the more complex transmission brings, CO2 emissions rise, but only to 101 g slash km. And when paired with the 1.0, it becomes the cleanest Swift of all, with CO2 emissions of just 97 g slash km. The standard gearbox, incidentally, is a 5-speed manual available across the range. However, you can have the 1.0 booster jet non-hybrid with a 6-speed auto in the top spec trim level, it's actually the fastest model in the lineup, with a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 10 seconds flat though CO2 emissions of 114 g slash km mean that it's also the least efficient version. The range will start with SZ3 trim, which is available only with the 1.2 liter engine. It brings DAB and Bluetooth, aircon, LED daytime running lights and a leather covered steering wheel, but makes do with 15 inch steel wheels and manually operated rear windows.
Step up to the SCT-1.0 booster jet only, which is expected to account for 40% of sales, and you'll add a 7-inch infotainment screen with smartphone link, a rear view camera, 16-inch alloy wheels and front fog lights. The range topping SC5 will be offered with the mild hybrid versions of both the 1.0 and the 1.2, the latter with four-wheel drive, and the non-hybrid 1.0 as an automatic. SC5 piles on the kit, you get the 4.2-inch LCD display between the instrument dials, as well as SAT NAV, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on the central screen, plus climate control, snazzier polished alloys, LED headlights and tail lights, adaptive cruise control, electric windows all round, keyless entry, reach adjustment on the steering wheel and electric folding door mirrors. You get a bit more safety kit, too, with a forward-facing camera and laser sensors that deliver lane departure warning and high beam assist, along with autonomous emergency braking. Swift devotees should expect a slight bump up in the entry point in the range, since the old basic SC2 trim is being dropped, along with the cheaper three-door variant. Full prices will be announced in May but it's already clear that the old £9,000 starting point is likely to move up to around £11,000. We've been testing a 1.0 booster jet hybrid, in a foreign trim level very close to what the UK will call SC5. You'll notice the engine's characterful three-cylinder burble as you pull away, but it's smooth enough and the turbocharger means there's usable torque from below 2,000 rpm so it's not as if you have to work it very hard. Its best work is pretty much done by 4,000 rpm, in fact. Once it's up to speed, the booster jet thrum drifts into the background, at 80 miles per hour you'll be pulling 3,000 rpm, but you're unlikely to hear the engine at all. This is as much down to considerable wind noise from around the A-pillar and side mirrors as it is the engine's fine manners. There's quite a noticeable whoosh at anything approaching motorway speeds. The rest of the basics are sound enough, the control weights, including the steering, are nicely weighted and consistent, and the five-speed manual gearbox has a pleasingly short throw and is happy enough to shift quickly. The chassis setup is equally deft, so the Swift feels nimble enough, its nose tucks in nicely when you point it at a corner, and it stays admirably flat through long, sweeping bends. The trade-off to this, though, is that the suspension configuration, McPherson struts up front and a beam at the back, is caught out a little too frequently on broken surfaces. The rear in particular fidgeted regularly over our French test route, we'd expect this to be compounded by the UK's poorer roads, despite Suzuki's claim that much of the car's development was conducted in Britain. The cabin has space for four adults, although six-footers are likely to find their knees pressed up against the back of the front seats if similarly tall people are occupying them. The boot, meanwhile, is a decent shape once you get over a sizable lip. The rear seats split 60 colon 40, but they don't fold down flat at all, indeed, they introduce a hefty step in the floor, so it won't be easy to slide heavier items into the expanded load bay. The whole environment feels tightly screwed together, with the sort of dependable, solid switches that we've come to expect from Suzuki. But it's desperately short on flare, even our range-topping car had swathes of hard, black plastic, with only a single color insert across the dashboard to brighten things up. There are precious few soft-touch materials, in fact, so while there's a feeling of quality, there's not much sign of luxury. You might think that the new infotainment system could make the difference in this regard but you'd be disappointed. It has all of the right credentials, with decent smartphone integration, at least on the top spec. However, while the screen itself is a decent size, it doesn't offer a stellar resolution. The system's processor appears to be easily overwhelmed, too, so you end up waiting for it to respond after each letter when you're typing an address for the navigation, for example. It's no better than what you'll find in higher-end Kias or Hyundais, in fact, and still seems a notch behind the premium system in the Fabia, 
with the new Fiesta and Evisa poised to raise the game on in-car entertainment yet further when they arrive later in the year. Key Specs Model, Suzuki Swift 1.0 Booster Jet SHV SSC5 Price, £13,750, EST Engine, 1.0 liter, 3 CYL, turbo petrol. Power slash torque, 110 bhp slash 170 nm. Transmission, 5 SPD manual, front wheel drive. 0 to 62 miles per hour, 10.6 seconds. Top speed, 121 miles per hour. Economy slash CO2. 61.4 mpg slash 104g slash km on sale june